everybody. Merry Christmas. I wanted to show you our family Christmas tradition of making cinnamon rolls the night before and I hope it becomes a Christmas tradition for you guys and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy it and my husband enjoys it. See a lot of people think that cinnamon rolls is really complicated and really involved. It's actually not bad at all and I'll show you um, with just a couple ingredients and I use my KitchenAid and if you don't have a KitchenAid that's okay. You can just use a food processor or you can mix it by hand. Before I got my KitchenAid I mixed a lot of bread by hand. It really builds up your forearm muscles. But let me show you the ingredients and we'll get started on the Christmas cinnamon rolls. This is your typical sweet yeast dough. You can use um you can also use this recipe to make some Hawaiian sweet rolls. A really good sweet roll dough and it starts off with some yeast and warm water. I've got some warm water here that I added a little bit of sugar to because the yeast eats the sugar and it helps the yeast activate and rise more. And it, it says two packets of active dry yeast. I buy the big jar because I do a lot of bread baking and two packs of active dry yeast comes out to four and a half teaspoons. So I'm just going to measure that in there and just kind of dump it in. One, two, three, four, and I just kind of eyeball half. You don't have to be exact with yeast. Four and a half. And I just stir that around and make sure all the yeast gets covered nice and soaking with the water. And I let that sit for five minutes to let the yeast activate. Next, I'm going to move on to the milk. So while my yeast is getting all nice and bubbly like so, that's perfect. You want to see nice little air bubbles in there. I have one cup of milk and a little bit less than one stick of butter. I did more than half a stick of butter in there. The recipe calls for one stick, but I don't think we need all that butter. So I pop that in the microwave and it says you want the milk to be scalding, which is right below boiling. Let that cool down just a little bit. So here is my butter, milk, and yeast in there. I added one teaspoon of salt and half a cup of sugar. And of course you want to make sure that the milk is warm enough, just warm to the touch. You don't want it to be hot or else the A, the yeast won't rise and you'll kill your yeast and B, you'll scramble your egg you're about to put in there. I've got one large egg I just lightly scrambled and I'm going to add into my mixture just a little bit at a time just so that you don't scramble the eggs and that your eggs come up to the same temperature as the mixture. So just add a little bit and stir it around, add a little bit and stir it around with a little spatula. Add four cups of all-purpose flour to your KitchenAid and if you're doing this with a hand mixer you can also do that. Just do one cup at a time. I'm just gonna put three and a half cups in here and see how the dough comes out. If it still looks kind of sticky then I'll add the extra half a cup but don't put any more than four cups of flour in here. Alright, I just went ahead and put my flour in there and then I'm going to turn this on medium and I'm going to let it go for six minutes. This is what your dough looks like. I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, it looks like the blob. It's an uber gooey mess. How am I going to form that into a ball of dough? What I like to do at this point is take all my dough out of here and I've got a lightly floured cutting board that I'm going to knead it and incorporate a little bit more flour in by hand. I just knead it maybe um, five or ten times, just so, just enough till it comes together like a ball and just keep your hands floured and it won't stick. So I'm going to dump this out on my cutting board here. Okay, so I ended up using a full four cups of flour. I added some more in there because it looked too wet. So I just dumped my dough out here on the cutting board with a little bit of flour and I like to knead it. So just a tiny bit of flour. You don't want to incorporate too much in there and you can tell when you start adding the flour how the dough will come together and change. You want it to be kind of a tiny bit sticky but really fluffy like a pillow. That's what you're going for. So I'm not a very good kneader even though I've kneaded a ton of bread doughs. But basically what you do is get a little bit of flour on your hand because you don't want it to stick and you want to push away from you and then fold it in half and bring it in and turn. And push away from you, fold it in half, stick it together and turn. Push it away and then you fold it. 
So if you're doing this process completely by hand, you're going to get a really good Christmas workout. So I just knead it a little bit until it comes together. And I kind of roll it around on the board to collect some of the flour so it's less flour you have to clean up later until it's in a nice little ball like that. And what's a good point to test if your dough is ready to sit, rest, and rise is you take a finger and you squidge it in there and poke it in its doughy belly. And when the indentation bounces back at you like that, it's nice and ready to go. This little baby dough ball is ready to take a nap. It's going to nap in a nice warm place for an hour and a half or until it's doubled in size. All right, I will see you when this has rested. All right, I just put it back in the same bowl, covered with a little bit of canola oil just so it doesn't stick to the sides. And I'm gonna cover this with a tea towel and wait until an hour and a half or I'm gonna check back and see if it looks nice and pretty and poofy. It's been an hour and a half and you can see that my dough has doubled in size. So what I'm gonna do is pour it out on my cutting board and roll it out to the size of my cutting board with a rolling pin. This is a lot of dough. It'll make just enough for a small army of people. Right then, just take some softened butter. You could even melt your butter if you want. I just like to rub it between my hands and then just smear it all over the dough. That was about two tablespoons. I might do one more tablespoon. I like a nice liberal covering of butter on my dough because when you put it in the oven and it melts it's going to be extra gooey and delicious. Alright, so you put your butter on here first and then you sprinkle cinnamon sugar on it and you could just do to taste. I do like um, a fourth a cup of sugar to a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I sprinkled my cinnamon sugar mixture on top of the butter and I'm just going to roll it up once you get it going, it rolls a little easier. Roll it into the log shape. Alright, now I'm just going to flip it real quick. Over there. And you want to make sure you seal the edges really well. And just go around and pinch the edges shut. So I'm just going to cut my log in half. It's too long for my cutting board. Now I just cut about a couple inches apart. So this is going to make a ton of cinnamons. You can also freeze this dough at this point. After I cut them, you're going to lay them in your baking dish and let it rise for another probably half an hour and then freeze it if you're going to freeze them. Yummy yum. So I'm just going to put them in my baking dish. If they touch, that's okay because that makes them yummy and gooey. Christmas morning and I took my cinnamon rolls out the oven and don't they look lovely and fluffy and delicious? My favorite part is the middle part where it's all gooey. Yeah, that part is yummy. I made some cream cheese frosting here with um, one block of the one-third less fat cream cheese and half a cup of powdered sugar. I do a fourth to a half a cup and some vanilla and I just whip it all in there until it's nice and fluffy. And I uh, will see you guys next time. I hope you try this recipe and you enjoy it as much as I do. Merry Christmas! Bye!